I'm gonna finish this league up. So, what's going on YouTube today? We're gonna play some modern Jund. I took Reed Duke's main deck and just update the sideboard a little bit. I unfortunately Moto glitched out here. I only have a 14 card sideboard. I didn't check it, which is kind of annoying. Would have been another Louis on the last help, but I, I took out the radio. I took out the the three phone images made them a duress and two radiant flames <clears throat> as well as cutting a grafter's cage for a nile spell bomb because i just like nile spell bomb it's my favorite it's my preferred graveyard hate so i have no disruption <clears throat> but i can play I have no disruption, but I've got good threats, and I've got plays by on turn two and three, so I'm gonna keep this. I'd love to have a discard spell. Looks like we're playing against Storm, if I had to guess. If I have a discard spell here, I'm gonna be much more comfortable. Okay. So I'm just gonna play this, because I don't really know what this land's gonna fetch. It's probably like an overgrown tomb. So we're not, we are playing against Storm. So I could just take this bowl and then hope that this Bob, he went top, top. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna take Lightning Bolt and then try to see what I can do with Bob. And then, Cause like, I can't beat a cost reducer, which is a card he could have easily put on top of his deck or like Manamorphose into cost reducer. I'm just gonna play this Bob and try not to die next turn. the opt, okay. That's not a bad draw, I'm still just gonna play Bob. I could like not do anything this turn and then have the lightning bolt handy, but there's totally draws where we die here. All right, well, we're not gonna die this turn, which is good for the home team. Alright, so we have to draw a card. Like another discard spell. Okay. Alright, that's nice. Start off by attacking. I'm probably gonna go fetch an overrun to him to get more green mana. One, two, three. So I'm just gonna take this gifts. And I think I'm just going to get Scavenging Ooze into play to just be able to harass the graveyard. The Tarmor is not really big enough at this point to really pressure them well enough. But the Scavenging Ooze can fight the Passing Flames. <coughs> My opponent is kind of spinning their wheels. I don't even know if I'm going to play. I'll probably play Tarmogoyf next turn. <coughs> and hold up one Scooze activation. And like bolt my opponent at the end of their turn. I think that that's the plan. I guess I play the canal. Throw it out the window. I'm actually going to play this. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to ditch my swamp. And then I'm going to play this Blood Mire so that I can either bolt my opponent or get a stomping ground and eat like a like gift I'm given. Hey, Philly. No. Good boy. So I'm not gonna eat the pass in flames right now because I would like to bolt a cost reducer. And they, they need more of a base in order to make this pass in flames good. If they like start to put rituals on the stack, I might eat the pass in flames.
Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and stopping ground and bolt my opponent. Actually, I think I'm going to get stopping ground and eat. And eat, like... I'm just going to eat this past the flames. I'd like to be able to bolt... Um... Okay, K command is... Bob's getting a little dangerous. <clears throat> Four, six, nine, thirteen. So four, four, eight. So if I plus and ditch my Tarmogoyf, I can actually kill my opponent next turn. So I think that is the plan. <coughs> With just the Colagon's command and the, and the burn. Okay, so I know they have a pyretic ritual. I'm just gonna wait. I'm not gonna get too aggressive. Probably just like end step, bolt, and command my opponent. So that means we got him. I'm gonna do this. I don't have anything that costs seven in my deck, but I guess I'll just eat this now. It's kind of an unfortunate draw for my opponent, I think. We could have Blood Braid Elf, but. Okay. So in this matchup, actually, I don't think I want my Liliana Last Hope, and I don't think I want my Blood Braid Elf. But I do want, I want Flames, I think I want another Command, I want Brutality, Duress, Thoughtseize, and my Spell Bombs. So I have quite a bit of cards to bring in, but not like a super amount to cut. I think I'm going to cut the Decay and the Terminate because their deck tends to board out some cost reducers. I can probably cut a land also because we're cutting the Blood Red Elves. 24 lands is enough. Um, I have to cut one more card, or I could just not bring in one of these cards. Maybe the third command is not very good. <clears throat> yeah, let's try this. Give this a whirl. Alright, sounds pretty good. Like, an opponent's mulliganing, so hopefully this bot will take us to, to the promised land. So I'm just going to play my Nihil Spellball on one to use my mana. It's going to kind of feel bad if my opponent plays something that <coughs> is worth lightning bolting, but... If you just jam a cost reducer here, it's going to be kind of feel bad, but I'm going to get a tap land into play. So what does my turn look like? Turn three. If my opponent plays a cost reducer, I really can't play my Bob. So I think I'm just going to like play this and then hope to pull to a cost reducer and then untap and play Bob which looks like what's not going to happen. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to play Bob no matter what here. Like, I need to find, like, a, we have Maelstrom Pulse to cover, like, so we have a top top. We got Pulse to cover things like Empty the Warrens. So, I'm just going to get Bob down. Nope. 
And then we can do something sweet next turn, like Treetop, Nile Spellbomb, Pass. Probably should have gone to Black Green there just because it would have been nice to, uh. Okay, there's Electromancer. <clears throat> Here we go. So this is this is like an empty. That's scary. I would have rather him just go ritual, 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 ritual. Pieces. Oh, so this is like a complete pieces miss. Just gets a serum visions. Wow, is my phone gonna like brick? So they kind of went fishing there and their pieces was just awful. <clears throat> yeah, so now I'm just going to play the Liana. This card's like going to really put the hurt on my opponent. And then next turn I'll do the like the plays that I talked about last turn. Getting my tap land into play, playing Nile Spell Bomb. Okay. I'll probably end up pulsing this. Because this card is very scary. And they have such a low, low base that they're not gonna be able to goblins me soon. And if they do, I've got one more pulse and two radiant flames to help deal with it. I'm gonna bolt my bob. I think I bolt Liliana. Wow. Okay. Radiant Flames. All right. So now I definitely feel good about um pulsing this. Just gonna fetch a forest to keep my life total out of peril. Pretty much completely resourced out. I just need to make sure I don't die to my. I'm not gonna die to my bottle. It's like the both my hand. Okay, so they put grape shot. Yeah, they put pieces and serum versions in their hands. So they have a, another pieces of the puzzle. Now they have a desperate ritual in their hand, and then the card they drew off of that. Scavenging is very good as well. I think I'm gonna play Treetop, play Liliana, and then play um, Spell Bomb. I'm gonna have to get a move on and like kill my opponent here pretty soon. Ditch this catacombs. We get the ritual from our opponent. So now we have kind of like the sleep a lot going on here. I mean, as long as we don't die to Bob, like. They must be going right at me, right? And they're just hope they're like hoping that Bob kills them. That is their plan. Okay, brutality's good. I'm trying to ditch the other Liliana. Um, cast brutality to gain. Then just hit them for five, put them on a one turn clock. And I don't think there's a draw that, I mean, I don't have a draw that kills me next turn. I've got past the flames covered from them, so we should be in good shape this game. Okay. 
Okay. So I don't have any blood ray else in my deck, so we're good. Order the elves out. And there we go. Yeah, and just, you know, Bob drew a million cards that game, which which is what did it. <clears throat> Hope everyone's having a good morning this morning or whenever you watch this on YouTube. Tickets. I just bought into some more modern staples, so I am a little low on tickets. So this 4 1 will be very nice. Ah, oh, this hand's very good. It's like Inquisition into like scavenging use or tap land, depending on what I need to do here. Can I get away with fetching a basic? No, I'm gonna go get over too, because if we if we're gonna play the scavenging, we might as well make sure we're flush on green mana. Okay, so we're playing against the red green Eldrazi deck. So I have a wolf run. So I can actually just take that noble hierarch and then K command their scavenging ooze. I definitely have to take this noble hierarch because their hand's not very good besides that, and I don't want them to play like a turn two reshaper. Which feels kind of sad taking a hierarch, but. Oh, oh I, oh, I misclicked and took the scavenging ooze. Ooh, that's bad. Alright, hopefully we find our little spell right here. Nope. Um... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna K command next turn. Oh, that's frustrating. I motoed it. So here was the matter of shaper. That's not a bad draw, that's probably a good a good for next turn. But for now, I just want to make sure that we can slow down a thought knots here. Gives us a really efficient turn next turn with like thought seas, scavenging ooze. Because then imagine it's like these scavenging ooze are just like aces. I don't have a land, okay. Alright, well now we're gonna thoughts is Tarmor Life. I'm not gonna block this next turn. If it comes in, it's gonna bowl me. Okay. So I can just take this obligator, because the obligator is really scary, and then if I draw a black land, I should be like Lily on out of the game. I think I'm just gonna take the obligator. They're two lands away from the Thought Knots here. I don't want them to like obligator me out of this game. Oh, that dismember was a big draw. I kinda just wanna play scavenging ooze. Stabilize the board. I could have played Blood Ray Elf, but it's like, if I Blood Ray Elf, no, what am I Blood Ray Elf into? Like, removal's not that good. Um, removal's not great. Uh, and, like, a Dark Confidant's not great. So, and, like, I could hit a Thought Seize, but that still is kind of mopey. 
I'm just gonna get this tap because it's gonna be large enough. The scoos is large enough to eat the matter reshaper next turn. So there's no need in making it like super large. Alright, that's a good draw as well. So what am I doing? If I go really on a tick up to try to eat these Dodd Knots here, am I discarding my Blood Raid Elf? Like, no. I could just play Blood Raid Elf. But I think I really want to get after these Thought Knots here. This feels like a sin. But I don't really have a good thing to Blood Braid Elf into at the moment. Like, all I want to do now is just make this scavenging use huge, eat my work on my opponent's hand. I'm just going to untap. If my opponent drew a lightning bolt, I really don't want to get got. Well, now I'm going to block, and then eat a Thought Not Seer. So drew an Ancient Starrings, which is a good hit. So now I feel much more comfortable playing this Blood Raid Elf, because you can play it into you know, just playing it into a matter of shape sucks. And playing it onto an open board sucks too with so much removal. But. Because now I can hit like a discard spell is good, a will of K command is good. Most of my removal is like lightning bolt. Okay, so we're not doing anything with that. So let's start off here. just use this first just because of that okay so I'm just gonna crack in here I'm okay losing to temple smasher they haven't hit a land yet they'd have to hit exactly temple and they're just dead on the board on the strike back on the crack back I think you're supposed to sideboard for this deck. I'm gonna leave my thought seasons in, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna take out my inquisitions. Because hitting these big dumb Eldrazi is really important. Not exactly. Not super familiar. No, this is only like my third league playing for this deck, so I don't exactly know how to. I don't exactly know what I'm doing here. Okay. One match away from the old, the old 4 1. This Huntmaster is probably pretty good. I'm going to assume this is pretty good. The Fatal Push is probably great. And the Thought Seize is probably very good. The cards I'm not interested in are Inquisition of Kozilek. I think my deck's pretty good against this thing. <clears throat> I would look to cut Lightning Bolts if they didn't have Noble Hierarchs. So I cut one card. K Command can be kind of medium because, like, their creatures are so big. Their creatures are, like, yeah, I think I'm going to cut one of these. And again, we have 14 sideboard cards here because we had a little moto issue. The Last Hope is also kind of medium, but the Last Hope can shrink, like, Reality Smasher. Which I'm in the market for. Puppy is out this morning. And it just rebuys things. It's probably better than K Command because it's like a, a continuous effect as opposed to like a one shot thing. I don't know. You should let me know in the comments how to sideboard against this deck. I have not played it. I don't really know how to sideboard this deck. When I play against, when I play Shadow, I'm not, I don't really know either. Just kind of an odd deck. I don't know if I want to all be like. The mid range plan or keeping some discard spells. Alright, so this hand's a bunch of threes and one land, so we're gonna ship this for sure. Alright. Removal spell. 
don't think we want the tree top. Like it's our fourth line for Bloodbraid Elf, but I think I really want to get like a one mana thing here. Like if I could draw a discard spell here, it would be so good. Cabin. Okay. It's potentially gonna throw our curve off here, but I think it's just high enough upside to hit just something here. Hopefully this is a matter shaper. Sounds like, do I bolt this thing? I probably have to. I got left mana up for it, so they put Grove into play. So if we get Smasher next turn, at least we're gonna have Liliana to eat it. We're already pretty far behind this game. And that's because Matter Shaper is very good against this deck. Matter Shaper, Matter Shaper is one of the most annoying cards to play against in Modern. Because, like, oh, he's got a bolt. Alright. Because it's just a 3 2, but it's a 3 2 that, like. Oh, it's so annoying. We're going to take 5 here. I would be willing to bet. We're about to get smacked. At least my opponent's hooking me up with some life and grow the burn balls. What a guy. Okay, so we just edict this. Get my reality smashed. All right, so that's an untapped land for Liliana, or for um, whatever it is. For so Blood Bray Elf next turn. I've been very happy with this jet deck when it comes to like straight card economy matchups. Like when cards matter, this jet deck is very good. We're gonna get smack my another one here. Jeez. So this one's gonna be tough to handle. You might just go at me and ignore this for a turn. If, especially if his hand's not very good, yeah. I kinda like that play. So hopefully we can elf our way out of this game. I'm going to six, so like the second, the third reality smasher is going to get me here. Uh, okay, so unfortunately we have to, have to discard a blood right elf, which kind of sucks. I'm just getting so punished by like the way that I use my Liliana. Like, Last match, I got screwed by not using it before I attacked. Right there, I got screwed by using it before I played right elf. Like, man, it's hard to figure out. Because like, if I'd have kept my land in my hand, I would have just discarded the land. But what if I'd have hit a Liliana? Am I going to get Obligator here? Yeah. So Obligator and go to one. Probably just edict them and continue attacking. Okay, so that's not good for me. I'm just gonna attack, like I'm already losing to another obligator. I need to get this game over with in order to have a chance. And like we're at such a low life total that without a scavenging use, I'm not really beating anything anyways. Okay. This easily could be like a thought not seer. But I just gonna blood rail for me. Yeah. What are they cascading to? Let's check that out. Okay, the cascade is my Alright. And there they just got underneath us. There's a big old Tom Boy. Definitely got punished for you know, it's just difficult. It's very difficult playing the Liliana of the Liliana of Veil game with Bloodbright Elf. Cause like you never know what it's gonna be. Oh 
So I need a green land, like, really bad. But besides that, his hand's really good. And we got everything that I want. I'm going to keep it. We got 22 more, 23 more lands in the deck. So, I'm trying to hope that we, if we hit a green land, like, we're in all sorts of good shape. Hopefully this is a hierarch. Nice. Just stunt the growth a little bit. All right, Greenland. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I was not specific enough. It's not like a scavenging is here. I get to eat it. Okay, there's a hierarch. I might just eat this again. Like, especially if they show me an old Drazi temple here. Cavern of Souls. No, 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 I'm just gonna eat this again so they can't thought not see me. Well, now I'm just gonna bolt it. Play my, play my big old Garma My boy. My boy, Tarm Goof. It kind of sucks, this Liliana, if I can't, like, just go down with it. Just, because I want to, I want both my cards. So I'm likely going to get Blood Ray Elf next turn, so I shouldn't just play it and do nothing with it. I think I'm just going to hold it. Because, like, I don't want a plus, because both these cards are great. They still have a Cavern. They didn't fetch. And I don't want to just do nothing with it in the face of Lily out of the face of Lightning Bolt and Blood Red Elf. Here comes. We're gonna get elfed here. Looks like we're gonna get elfed. If I draw an untapped land, I might just rage them. Like, we're gonna attack them for eight, and they're dead on the next turn. That's okay. So he takes a little on, I would assume. <laughs> and then when I attack first, and then grab it is. Definitely thank you, Lily Plus. But I want both my cards, right? Are my cards like really good? Like I would assume that these maelstrom pulses are better than a random card from my opponent. Because like if I ditch a maelstrom pulse, what if he ditches a land? Yes, you I mean you're being results oriented right there, death right? You took a pulse. That is interesting. Now I'm just gonna cast this. And then hit this, and then continue beating. Like this is kind of soft to an obligator. But I should have I, I I mistapped. I should have left this red land up in case I got a lightning bolt. So we're just gonna start elfing for the rest of the game, which is good. So should I just like cast my Liliana and not do anything with it? Because like I definitely don't, I definitely don't want to trade a Maelstrom Pulse for a random card from my opponent. Like I'm not into that life. So if my opponent, is this gonna be a Blood Red Elf from them? What are they doing? If they cast a Blood Red Elf, we'll elf them back. And we'll probably just like turn this game into a huge elf mess here. Yeah. Okay, Bolt. So Bolt goes after my Liliana, unless they have another Lightning Bolt, and they bolt my Tom Royf. Really? You think a Maelstrom Pulse is worse than a random card most of the time? All right, well. So I can hold back here, and if they have another Lightning Bolt, they can look to trade. Was it better? Nah, it's just better to play the Elf instead of casting the Ravine. Instead of firing up Ravine. I can just do that next turn. All right, and now we're just going to smack in with both of our dudes. And then play a Stomping Ground next. Stomping Ground after combat. Oh, 
Schneikes. My puppy is dreaming. Pretty interesting spot. I think my opponent blocks. I'm, I'm assuming they have a light involved. Okay, so they're just going to try to get the Tarmogoyf off the battlefield. They have a Dismember. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, it kind of sucks for them to go to six. So now they're just like dead six ways to Sunday, do. <clears throat> they're going to need some help here. The board is I have a very formidable board. I can pulse their elf now. <laughs> okay, so now they're going to elf. Boy, it is fun to just throw these haymakers back and forth at each other. Ancient stirrings. I don't play a lot of Jun, but it usually creates good gameplay, which I like. Like, the games are interesting. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I can play Elf and um, Scavenging Ooze. Yeah. All right, nice. Let me go back to the deck here. Figure out if I want to do anything. You just want two, two for one. Your opponent a bunch. Yep, that is what it does. So I took Reed Duke's list here and um just made a couple changes because like. I cut the Fulminator Mages because I don't even think you can beat Tron anyways with Fulminator Mage. Dampening Sphere, when that comes out, might be some big game for this deck. But, and then I just cut the Graph Trigger's Cage and added a Spellbomb because I like Spellbomb better than Cage. But I'm going to jump back into another league. I'm going to get some coffee. 4 1's a good way to start the morning. I lost a Storm here. I lost a Storm yesterday. This is a very good Storm player as well. Like, I play against him all the time. I struggle beating him when I'm playing Death Shadow. And Death Shadow is likely much better against Storm than Jund is. We'll be right back. You should have one cage for the cord and company decks. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I didn't think about that. Like I, like I said, I don't play too, too much Jun, so like I definitely miss like the subtle interactions. Like I would just, I'd be playing Death Shadow now and I'd be like, okay, there's my stuff for denials are for like this spot. But I did add two Radiant Flames to the deck, which helped. And that, that's something that hurts me not having anger. I don't really like anger in this deck because sometimes you have to like force double red, which gets a little rough. But I think with all the green mana I have, if I have Radiant Flames and Scavenging Ooze, then that pretty much stabilizes me. Oh geez. But yeah, I appreciate everybody being here this morning. I'm gonna stream all the way up until the Star City games. And then I'm gonna watch that slash do my taxes slash eat because radiant flames is three damage kills mantis rider kills the humans after a value trigger i really dislike kozlek's return the only the only matchup where i would rather have kozlek's return is like there's two i guess you you want it you don't even want it against merfolk because you kill all the tokens the master wave is still there um and that's fine uh i definitely want the only is, is affinity affinity is the only one where i would rather have it okay probably gonna lead on my swamp there's just no need to take a million damage if i don't have to 
And I don't, I don't think, and maybe Radiant Flames is wrong after Blood Red Elf is coming to the format, but I'm thinking, I guess maybe, like when I play Death Shadow with Blood Red Elf, I don't ever have Radiant Flames with Blood Red Elf in my deck at the same time. So this is just an easy, faithless looting. My opponent's hand is terrible. So like, I guess that's, it's probably better to play Anger because I do just cut off, that's a good rip. I do just cut off the opportunity to keep Blood Bright Elf in the deck. So I can see that. So now we're just kind of in a holding pattern. None of us are going to do anything for a little while. All right, that was a good hit. There's two discard spells with gasoline. Uh, so that's three spells from my opponents. They are kind of close to reveling. No, I didn't give up on Death Shadow. I'm just playing uh, just playing something new. I'm gonna play Death Shadow at an IQ next week or tomorrow. Could reasonably take Dreadbore and try to shut off. You're talking there? Well, that's what the Faithless looting was hopefully doing, but then my opponent ripped two very good spells. So my opponent has kind of picked me apart here. Like, the whole plan was that this Faithless looting was going to, like, fix this hand. The nice thing, though, is that my opponent's going to lose. Oh, so they ripped a looting. Yeah, so now I'm in a lot of trouble. These two discard spells were pretty savage rips. Yeah, I'm going to play Death Shadow at an IQ tomorrow. I just wanted to play something different today. I don't have any Jun content on my stream, so... All right, we're just gonna play lands and go. I can't imagine this is a good matchup because like Bedlam Reveler just goes over the top. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a Reveler. Oh wow, they didn't even, they're not even going for the Reveler, they're just going Lingering Souls. That's scary. My opponent's hand is just like that stacked. Oh, I should have got a stomping ground. That was a mistake. Grab the wrong land there. Okay. I'm trying to hope they don't have an answer to this. Definitely should have grabbed stomping ground. Uh, okay. Eventually, the can't win aspect of this game. Yeah, I'm just like super dead. Gross. My opponent had two pretty timely. All right, we're good. We're good here. We got savagely outdrawn there, and that's that's the benefit of playing a. 20 land mid-range deck versus a 25 land mid-range deck is that you're just gonna like you're just gonna draw more relevant spells there so I want my Huntmaster want this want this I want these here I'm not interested in Inquisition of Kozilek I'm not really interested in all of my Liliana's I'm kind of interested in a Thoughtseize, because like Thoughtseize and a Bedlam Leveler is a pretty big game. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I definitely want these. Liliana Veil is pretty embarrassing in the face of Lingering Souls and um, Young Pyromancer. So maybe I just don't want any of my Lilianas. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna cut my Liliana's. Cause like, it's, the plus is bad, the minus is bad. Yeah, let's give this a try. I really like Huntmaster. Like I've, I've played this, I've played this card a couple times and been very happy with it.
So I really don't want a mulligan in this matchup, but if I don't hit a green land, and then, like my hand's not even very good with a green land because I can't leverage these scavenging uses. All right, we'll scry a land in the top. Oh, flames, forgot about flames, zoned out there. See, we're still waking up this morning. Well, I, I wanted to leave Decay in because of Blood Moon. So we'll definitely get Radiant Flames back in the deck next, after sideboarding here. Probably don't want my Lightning Bolts. Like, I'll take out, I'll cut a couple bolts, and that's going to be the plan for a game, the next game here. I think I just want to take Bedlam Reveler. I can handle this. Brutality is annoying, but like this Bedlam Reveler is just the card that's going to beat me. And if I can like somehow slog, but these Ling this Liliana can handle these Lingering Souls tokens. I can grab the Pyromancer covered. Yeah, I'm just going to like, because we're hunkering down for a long game, that Bedlam Reveler is just going to go way over the top of me. Like cards I can't beat, this card. Yeah, I've got to bring the Radiant Flames in the next game. That was just a pure mistake. It's likely the best thing to do. I board out. Boarding out a full hunter. Yes. Yeah, I... I get you. So now I'm going to go get... Blood Crypt. Okay. So I'm gonna hit a stomping ground. My life total is a little low at the moment, but I, I want to cast this on a stable board. We get punished here if my opponent draws a dread boar, but either that I'm not doing anything in my turn. Like the terminate's not that great. I mean holding up terminate's fine if my opponent plays into it. But the Kolagon's command's no good. This just makes like every single one of my opponent's plays much worse. So I'm chew through these tokens. My opponent tries to like... Okay, so this is K command time. As soon as my opponent puts a spell on the stack. Fetching Break is pretty punishing if you had draw blood moon. Well, I have the I have the abrupt decay in my hand, and well, I guess I drew the abrupt decay. So, but then I wonder if he even boards. I wonder if they keep. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably a mistake. I'm all over the place this this match here. So now I'm likely gonna have to start sending. Some removal spells at these tokens. Well, hang on. Let me do. Some, I'll do some math and they attack. We're gonna have to hold this abrupt decay for probably the rest of the game because of how our lands are working. Okay. So this hits here. Takes two. Takes three. Go two. Tick up to three. Down. Go to one. takes probably like a decay or the terminate if they drew a bedlam revler yeah so they drew a revler which is not good so we can't play around light they're representing lightning bolt and bedlam revler with what they took there and we can't beat bolt anyways so we're gonna let a liliana take two land off the top of these gas all right these tech lands are frustrating like I get that they're very good, but they're also just like very frustrating to not cast my spells on time. But I guess I like miss land drops anyways, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Am 
My Liliana loses, dies to a K command now, but it would take two of my cards to make that not happen. So, this Liliana's gotten me some good value so far. Revel in Riches. That's what they discard. Blessing Liar. Draw three cards. Bing, bing. So is it worth, like, bolting one of these, taking up, and then playing Blood Red Elf? Taking up on this. But my spot removal is not great. I think I'm actually going to bolt one of these. I'm going to take up here, block, like, bolt the spirit, block this, tick up on here. My opponent casts a million spells, and they, but it doesn't even trade. Minus two, minus one. So they cast one spell, it doesn't trade. I think I am going to bolt this spirit because I want to, like, threaten being able to return a Bloodbraid Elf after I block this next turn. And if I play, like, if I'm just on the board, like, so this, like, blocks here. I take up on this. And it's just Reveler versus Bloodbraid Elf. Lily bolt the Reveler. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. So then do I want to decay one of these to threaten a Lily, to threaten bringing back a Bloodbraid Elf? Yeah, I think I want to decay one of these to threaten bringing back the Elf with this. Like, I don't want to just have them remove it. Well, no, now they're not going to remove it. Right? It's likely this Lightning Bolt's not going to get much better than this because I sideboarded, I missed sideboarded. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of one of these. The lightning bolt's likely not gonna do very much more, especially when I have a decay in my hand. Oh shoot. I'm all over the place today. <sighs> Chat, we're, I'm losing my mind. I'm literally like talking about, it's, it's a little early. I'm literally talking about plays and then like doing the other thing. All right, well that's a good hit at least. So now at least I can put some power in front of this. Oh my gosh. So they have two removal spells here. I'm gonna feel pretty bad. And there's, there's the moon. So this gets us a forest because at least we can now chump this Bloodbraid Elf. God, I'm just like super punished for everything that I've done in my life here. Oh yeah. I was literally like sitting here, I was talking about making these plays and then just not doing it. Now I'm just gonna try to double block this. We have some good hits off of, like if they kill my Bloodbraid Elf, we have some good hits off of this. All right, I'm just gonna take this up one more time and then look to roll it back next turn and get a Tarnal Wave back. My opponent is kind of running on empty. They have a looting, but looting is not that good when you have one card in hand. They're cut off from hard casting Lingering Souls, but <laughs> yeah, this is so like, I'm literally talking about all these plays that are the right plays to make. Why wouldn't you just hold that to Faithless Looting away? Okay, so K commanding back their Reveler. That's gross. Ditch the thought season, give me three cards. Wow, that one, that one would be gas at the moment. So now I'm just gonna chump this. I'm attacking, I'm blocking this no matter what. And then I'm gonna roll my Liliana down and get it back. So like this seems like a pretty poor matchup. I did not do myself any favors 
the way that I played this game. Yeah, we're just dead here. We're dead. We're dead. But like, I don't think that, I, like I didn't do myself any favors there, let's be real. I played like an asshole during this match. But like, that seems like a pretty rough one. Between Bedlam Reveler and Lingering Souls, like, that seems like one that'll go way over the top of us. I'd never beat that deck. Even when I play Death Shadow, it's even worse. I just never beat that thing. I appreciate how you're all here to call me out on my garbage. All right, I'm gonna keep this hand. I'm gonna fetch a basic swamp more than likely. Mountain, that's scary. Still gonna fetch a basic swamp. Cause it, let's just hope that it's a random blood moon deck. Let's hope it's not burn. If it's burn, I'm likely dead. Okay, so it's a random blood moon deck, which is good. So I don't really have a lot of ones in my deck. So Chalice of the Void's not that good. I could just take a braid and then a Bob's gonna stick. I have to figure out what to do with this Dire Fleet Dare. This Dire Fleet Dare is whatever. They're just gonna, you know, thought sees me. But this Goblin Rabble Master is gonna be scary. I think I'm just gonna take a Braid. I only have like a couple discard spells which aren't gonna be good in very long. And, um, Gemstone Cavern. And we easily, like I've got two commands and a Decay in my deck to handle that. So I'm gonna get a trigger off of this. They're gonna have Rabble Master down. So hopefully this Bob finds me an answer to Rabble Master. Okay. Removal spell off the top. All right, I mean, that's a lot of damage. Okay, so this Bob is trading with a Rabble Master if they send one in. Bomb and Ruins, nice. Card banned. I feel so bad, like, just taking this damage. I think I'm gonna wait a turn to block. And I don't want to trade with these mopey one ones when this thing's just still spitting them out. This directly daredevil, Chandra. Okay. These should go up here, right? They just blow like it blows trading with this thing here. All right, last hope's really good. Decay is good. Thoughtseize is not good. So how do I win? If I abrupt decay this, do some trading, take two, elf into the Chandra next turn. Decay, block, block, take two, take four. Stop on my opponent's main phase before they go to combat. Alternatively, I could just Bloodbraid Elf, but I don't really know what I'd hit. These are Dark Confidants, Archmage. We're, we're changing it up today. I could play Liliana and tick up here. Block, 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 take two, take four. So like no matter what, I'm taking damage next turn, taking four two damage next turn with what's on the board. I think it's just better to get my last hope into play and start like working on my opponent's board as opposed to and then like Bloodbraid Elf next turn when I can hopefully get into this Chandra. If my opponent just doesn't attack and says Bob's gonna kill me, then like 
bot's probably going to kill me. But I don't want to go tick up here. Block, block, or block, block, take two. Tick up, play Blood Bright Elf, and hopefully get into this. I don't think, I think I'm dead either way here. But I think my best line is to start getting some incremental advantage with this. I should have left, I should have left a different mana. Should have different a different thing a different uh the red land open just to bluff a lightning bolt. Bull mat courier. They're just gonna deal damage to me. So block. I'm definitely gonna just trade with these two if they don't attack with the rattle master. Yep. Now we're just trading. Now I need to like Simeon Spirit Guide, wrong number rooms. Okay, got it. Yep, yeah, there was there's a lot of ways that things go wrong there. So I want every single piece on the Colagon's command because it hits Chalice. Radiant Flames, Last Hope. I don't think I want Ancient Grudge. Probably want Thought Seasons because he's a Blood Moon deck. It's so weird because like this prison deck wants me to board in like all my anti like crap cards, but then I also want to board in some of my mid rangey cards to deal with uh, whatever the dumb card is. Rabble Master because like that card's scary. I think these Liliana the Veils are likely garbage. Like they're 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 either insane or terrible depending on the draw. Like if they don't have a Rabble Master, then they're gonna get us. And they're great. I don't have any idea how to sideboard with this monstrosity here. Like, do I even want to go all the way up to Blood Bray Elf? Blood Bray Elf's probably not where I want to be. Yeah, Blood Bray Elf's kind of slow and clunky. Like, we're not looking to do that with our lives. I'm gonna bring in the Huntmaster and the Kitchen Finks in the face of like Planeswalkers. I just don't think this Liliana is very good at all. I'm gonna take them all out. Bring in a Duress to hit all of his like lock pieces. I don't have any idea if this is a good thing to do or not. Grudge just hits Chalice though, right? I guess they could have Bridge. They could have Bridge. Oh man. Bridge. I didn't think about Bridge. All right, well, we have an answer to Chalice and Bridge. That's another thing that you miss when you don't, like, you don't play a lot of decks, you don't play the same decks very often, is that you're not thinking while well sideboarding of, like, oh, how does my opponent's deck beat me? And it's usually through, I don't know, Chalice, or it's through Blood Moon, but, like, you don't think of the cards that they have. Like, most of the time when I play Death Shadow, I just ignore what my opponent does and just kill them. So this is an easy moon. Then I can fetch a round moon, but I really just like if I if I take the moon, then if I take them if I leave them with moon, then it shuts off my man land, which is a good way to like have me get in the game. Okay. We're just gonna bolt this thing. And command this. More than likely gonna get a spell. Mindstone, interesting. Mindstone over the chalice. Alright. I'm trying to fetch a basic. Alright. We're gonna get my main man down here. Okay, I love, I love Tom Boyf. Cards I love. Archmage, have you played the? Uh, there's been a blue white deck that's been running around Moto a lot lately. That's like a Wall of Omens Restoration Angel deck. 
that plays like Kitchen Finks also. Like it's just like a blue white creature deck. It plays like Jace as well. I've been seeing it around Moto a lot. Played against it like three times yesterday when I was testing. Chalice for one. So I know they have an abrade, so there's no sense in me playing this Bob out unless the game plan is next turn to go abrade, rebuy, Bob, shatter, rebuy. Yeah, I like that. So like they have to abrade this, which you know kind of splits their turn up, and then I can go bang bang play it again next turn. If they play a little bit of monkey business, they must have another land. There's no way they're letting. Okay. Okay. So yeah, there that goes. I could also just make them discard a card. Like this chalice for one is not really doing anything. Or I could just go like shock, rebuy, get in, kill them next turn. Yeah. Return to all your creature in the graveyard of your hand. Deal two damage to this. And then fetch a swamp. And then play Bob again. Yeah, this chalice on one is definitely not as bad as I'm used to it being. Like most of the time, whenever I play Death Shadow, Chalice on one is like lights out. Ether Hub. Hmm. Ooh, is he gonna coke? He's gonna cake him in. Just go shoot, make me discard. Alright. Rude. My opponent's taking my own spells. Green mana is sad. Alright, they block. Then play the Scooze Man. I'm definitely still gonna board in my grudges because like we're still pretty naked to like an ensnaring bridge. Like ens uh, ensnaring bridge is kind of scary. And we might have draws where like hitting hitting this these mind stones to cut off draw steps from our opponents also relevant. So yeah, we're definitely gonna bring in bring in some ancient grudges. I probably don't need all of my lightning bolts. Bring these in. Maybe I can just cut all my lightning bolts and then have collective brutality also. What does brutality do? Nothing. Just kidding. Just keep these because they can hit. Whatever that dumb card is, Rattle Master. Maybe I can cut. No, I've, no I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to cut a land. Keeping one more Lightning Bolt just to make sure that we don't get got by Rattle Master. Because we cut out. We, we, we only have one 4 drop in the deck. And 24 lands is fine when Blood Red Elf isn't our main game plan. Can't beat Blood Moon. Keep. Besides that, we're good. I'm gonna fetch a swamp on one. Okay, so we have Chalice, Ratchet Bomb, Magus of the Moon. So I can deal with the Magus of the Moon. I can deal with the Chalice. I can deal with the Mega Moon and the Chalice at the same time. I think I'm just going to take Ratchet Bomb. OK. 
Okay, so there's the chalice. We're gonna get Bob down. But then I'm just gonna like shatter shock more than likely. There's the Magus. Lightning bolt's good. Above the K is good as well. This comes into play untapped. No, right? Yeah. So, tar our destroy target artifact, two damage. Get in here with Bob. Hopefully, I miss a land drop. That'd be nice. I love beating decks like this. Like this, just like no shenanigans, BS kind of, kind of crap. Simeon Spirit Guide into Chandra. No oh, bot nuts here. That's odd. Oh, Chandra ticked down on my Bob was the play. At least that's what I would have done. Chandra going into Bob. I was like, this Bob is just gonna bury him. That seems like a very odd play from my opponent. If you're gonna like shoot your resources, you might as well do it like that. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna take his Dire Fleet Daredevil too. Question is, has this Bob drawn me enough action? I think that the answer is no. Could have held up for a top deck Blood Moon, but then the Daredevil gets to take a card from me. <laughs> okay, so I have a stop on their main phase. Bolt this. So we're on untap land, I think I'm just gonna rumble. Bob, kitchen of things. So I think what I'm going to do here, play Finks, attack with Bob, chump block the Thought Knots here, gain two more life, next turn play another Bob and try to trade the Bob and the Thought Knots here, or the Finks, the, the persisted Finks for the Thought Knots here, because it lets me continue to like not break the draw, the chain of drawing cards. We're gonna chump block this. Get your things gonna gain me four life, which is sweet. I like things. I kind of want to try this deck playing Draws Messenger. Also, don't blood me. Okay, Monkey Man, sure. Terminate. Okay. We're doing it. Okay. Attacking with both. I'll play another Bob. Okay, so now we're gonna go like this. Play Bob, likely fetch Forest and decay this. I'm not taking any more damage with two Dark Confidence in play. And then next turn, we're firing up the Ravine. I'm going to decay this. Even if my opponent Blood moves me, they're on a two turn clock. So I just don't want to take any more damage. All right, it's, it's time. So decay the moon. I think I'm just gonna decay the moon. I can trade. I can trade my Bob here. So we'll get forest. Come on a block. Okay. Animate. 
We can just block this, take six. So I might as well just lightning bolt this, because we can't kill them. Crack them for six, and then K command them in their draw step. I believe I was one short off there. We're so far ahead that I didn't count it, but count it to the T's, but okay. Nice. Alright, I'm gonna go grab another cup of coffee. I'll be right back. I appreciate everybody that's hanging out here this morning. They at least bear with me through that last, that Mardu game. I did not play very well in that Mardu game. I'm pretty excited about Dampening Sphere coming out. I think that this deck gets much better because like, let's just say like three or theoretically, the cards I, I can build my sideboard differently like the Graph Digger's Cage. I don't know, because most of the time you have, these gen decks have anywhere between like five and eight sideboard slots that are that are good against uh, whatever it is, Storm or Tron. And now you can just lower that to four and play more honed, better sideboard cards, which is pretty nice. It's pretty good. Hopefully my opponent's playing a Noble Hierarch deck. Don't show me a Tron land. Don't do it. Okay. All right. This is going to be interesting. I have, like, a bit more respect for humans in my deck. I've just got more cards in my sideboard for it. I would assume that a Dark Confidant should be pretty good against humans. Definitely gonna bolt this before Dahlia comes down. I'm going to see what my opponent does here, because there is a world where I just like they play like a noble hierarch off of this that I bolt it. That I like bolt the hierarch. So I can bolt the Noble and then play Tarmogoyf next turn and then try to pulse both of these, which I think I want to do. It leaves me pretty, like I'm going to take a lot of damage if my opponent has like a, I guess a Thalia is pretty bad for me, but I can get a 3-4 Tarmogoyf which checks at least, will most likely check the second pair champion. I do have to take three damage to do this, which is a little annoying, but I do think I'm going to try to pulse this. I assume that we can't block this this turn, but I probably will still block this card next turn. My opponent plays a Thalia, that's going to be kind of a disaster. Reflector Mage would suck. Oh, the Freebooter. Oh, I didn't think about Freebooter. Oh, that's not good. All right, well, at least I can hold off the second champion. And with enough removal spells in my deck, I can hopefully get this pulse back and have this pulse do something for me. Take a four. That was a good rip. Black, green, one. Get 
out of my face. Next time we play another Goyf. We're still in some trouble. Like my opponent has draws that do handle us a little bit here. That's that's not one of them. We got um, image or meddling mage. Okay, so we're gonna image my Tomaloy. Okay. It's gonna help shore up the ground a little bit. That pulse was a was a was a really good draw. So now if I get a lightning bolt, I get to like, or a one mana remove, so I'll get to deal with this, hit this. I don't know, I don't have any idea how I'm supposed to sideboard. Like, is four mana for Bloodbred Elf too slow? This is a Reflector Mage, it's gonna be kind of annoying. Or it's a Mantis Rider. So that puts us on the old one turn clock here. I need to find a way to deal with this, and then I can deal with this. That is the plan. Didn't do it. All right, let's see what they got on the way out. Okay. Got Mantis Rider. All right. So cards I'm interested in. I'm interested in this Fatal Push. I'm interested in this. This right here, the Huntmaster, Last Hope, and Brutalities. I'm not interested in Thoughtseize. And I'm not really interested. Liliana the Veil's okay on the play. Maybe these Blood Raid also are just like too slow. And like the 3-2 body is not very relevant. I like discard on the play. K commands like kind of medium because like most of their things grow at like K commands pretty irrelevant after a sh after my opponent shocks. K command excuse me K command is pretty irrelevant after my opponent has a Thalia's lieutenant trigger and with Thalia itself it's not very good. Thalia's also like makes blood rail kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go like this. I could keep one thought season because it's a oh, turn one play. And cut like a land. Probably not gonna need 25 lands. Probably can cut the treetop. Now the treetop's a creature land. I'll just cut a bloodstain mire and keep bringing a thought seize. It's just a turn one play. I'll gladly trade thought seize for like a mirror and crusader. That's one of my only ways to really fight that card. All right, sounds good. Thoroughly impressed by this card. Every single time I played it. Like I don't know if you can play two of these in your sideboard because I'm not sure if you can afford to have that much, um, that much, uh, that many four drops in your deck. Like six four drops in grindy matchups. We're gonna take this lieutenant. Lieutenant's just going to get out of control with these champions. I'm probably going to get a trigger off my Bob and try to trade it for a champion. Or trade, trade it, yeah. My opponent's going to hit me for two. If they play, I don't know what they're going to do. They might play Freebooter. Depends on what my opponent does next turn.
Because like there's arguments in just drawing a card and trading. And just being up a card. If my opponent plays, I don't know. Like no matter what, I'm not blocking this turn. If they drew like a noble hierarchy, that would really suck. So we're going to draw a card. Those were two very good draws. So like bolt this, trade, play Huntmaster. Or am I just going to continue drawing cards off Bob? I think I'm going to just keep drawing. Like Bob's, Bob's going to do, do me good here. Considering like the wolf token can trade with this. Like Huntmaster is going to, you know, give me some life and shore up the ground. Okay, so they still have an ancient ziggurat. Sin Collector. Okay. Annoying, but we're going to get to clear out both of these champions. So if they still have the Kite Sail Freebooter. I thought they were going to cast it, so I just got rid of it. And I guess that's a good play for them because they, they saw that I had this Lightning Bolt, and like if I play the Freebooter, then the Freebooter doesn't do anything. Because of the new templating, thank God. This Huntmaster should do work. Just passing with it. I love this Huntmaster. <laughs> God, Archmage, you're so positive. And this human's deck does not play. Wow, this is sick. Because this human's deck does not play at instant speed. So I'm just going to start passing and just flipping this Huntmaster. And just working this Dark Confidant. This Bob is going to be such gad. This, oh my god, dude. I love this card. Well, I'm not streaming the challenge today, Archmage. I'm just streaming before the SCG. I gotta do like taxes and stuff. I think I'm just gonna attack with my wolf and then pass the turn. Just start working this Huntmaster and then like flip it back next turn. And probably hit this, probably hit the Freebooter. Taxes. Yep. Gotta do them taxes. Let me tell you about my boy Bob. Alright. So now we're gonna change our sideboard a little bit because these Lilianas are god awful on the draw. And I think that I'm gonna want a couple more discard spells. Because I just need to interact in the early game before I get buried. The question is, is Liliana better than Koligon's Command? And I think that it's not. They will suck in the face of Thalia, but that's at least targeted discard, or targeted shocking. It doesn't just trade with a Noble Hierarch. Dipping it. All right, this hand's great. It's just more removal, right? It allows us to trade off Bob's early. 
and have faith that we can still. Yep, I agree. I probably just want as many removal spells as I can get my hands on. An ether vial will be kind of annoying here. Okay, champions, whatever. We're just gonna leave with a discard spell. Hit something that's much more important than this champion. This champion could outpace my radiant flames, so I might have to kill this next turn. Yeah, like this Dahlia. This whole hand sucks. Could take a Dr. Mage because it's more likely going to hold that until I have a creature. Yeah. This is a noble proposition. Yeah. They'd have to play two creatures to get this out of Radiant Flames range. So I'm just gonna take my two fur. Hopefully they just play it. These. These. Don't have another one. Don't play anything else. Yeah, I play two in my side where we drew both of them. So I have to make sure that I converge right. Okay, red, black, green. Get out of my face. The old three fur. And I still have a mirror and crusader covered. like what what do I do this Inquisition not looking great at the moment first one was good second one's not good so now we just need to draw anything and by anything we mean a scavenge you as a Tarmogoyf or a they can easily come back we don't draw yes I agree let's get this last card I think I'm just going to bolt this, just to keep my life total high. Like, I'm not getting any value out. It's not like I'm holding for this Radiant Flames. I'm just going to just gonna deal with this. Here comes a Phantasmal image, it looks like. What's blue, blue, and a human? Yeah, it's a Phantasmal image. Don't cast Phantasmal image, dude. You can't do that. No, this is just like... Yeah, that's just an awful play. Because now they just got two for one. This is when you don't cast image. Because it, it like it comes in and enters. Yeah, that was not a good opponent. I'm just gonna deal with this. I have a lot of three three costing cast cards I'd like to play. I have this Radiant Flames. I'm gonna hold this for a Mirror and Crusader, more than likely. I just don't want to like waste my like I don't want to have to like do a couple things on my turn. Oh shoot, tilt. All right, so now we're just kind of passing. At least the Kitchen thinks is something. Sin Collector. Okay. Yeah, that's... And some people don't understand, like, I had to talk with my buddy, who's like a very good magic player. He was like, how does Phantasmal Image work? And I'm like, does it target? And I was like, no, it doesn't. You just cast Phantasmal Image. And when it hits the battlefield, you just pick. And he was like, oh, okay. Like, you can't respond to it at all. There we go. There's my boy. There's my 3-4. 
We don't even have, I guess we do have a sorcery. We don't have a land in the middle yet, which is odd. I don't know what this could be, but I'm gonna check it out. It's probably a land, okay. Like, it's not like the, the discard spell was getting any better there, anywhere. So I might as well just do like a land check. Like the discard spell is useless, it's a dead draw at this point. You just play a tap that we're going to. Well, I attacked with Tarmaloyf, so if we wanted to do that, we would have to, we would have had to not attack with Tarmaloyf. Because Tarmaloyf will hit this. And then I'm probably just going to take two from this and crack my opponent for six. Yeah, I'm just going to trade off, hit this. So what are we more scared of? Going long, or I could just go like bing, crack for six and put my opponent like kind of on notice. But like racing humans is kind of scary. So maybe I just like attack with Tarmaloyf, Maelstrom Pulse this, and then pass. Yeah, I think I kind of like that. Because like if my opponent just flips, like if I pulse this, attack with both, and they flip a Mantis Rider, then the whole script is changed. If they want to trade two for one, they can trade two for one. The Sin Collector is just not doing anything. This Thali is the is there other is there another card that I would rather Maelstrom holes? Probably like Xanthrid Necromancer or um, whatever the dumb card is. Um, Mantis Rider. So I think I'm just gonna pass. We're just gonna hold this Finks back here to block. And we're just gonna beat with our Tarmal Life. My opponent does kind of have to deal with this, like, trade at some point. That's a good draw. So now I think I'm more comfortable attacking with Volt, because I can go, like, pulse this value as Lieutenant, and then hold up Terminate. Though, I might as well just pulse this Collector. Because I don't think the game is going to go very much longer. Like, I, I, I missed tap there. That was stupid. Now I'm just, like, telegraphing terminate to my opponent. I should have gone, like, right here, then held up decay or terminate. Okay. Probably just gonna take a shot from this. Yeah, we're not blocking. Not blocking, not killing it either. I'm worried about a Xanthra Necromancer or a Mantis Rider. Now we're just gonna get in. My opponent's gonna have to block next turn. Some of these decks have evolved to play P and K, and like P and K would be super annoying right now. And again, we're gonna let our opponent attack and then terminate a blocker. Okay. That Thally is annoying because it trades with this kitchen things. Or just eats it, excuse me. Hang on one second before I take this damage. It costs three. So I'm still just going to terminate. Well, I guess at this point. I can hold, I can terminate this, and then my opponent has to block with both of their creatures, which I'm kind of all about. And like, they, they, they're just chumping. Like, this Thalia is the only 
good trade that they have. And now they just throw both of their creatures under the bus unless they have a dismember. But then they can't even cast a dismember yet. So they're just like double chumping. And we're just like winning. Okay. So I have to imagine that humans is a humans is a poor Jun matchup if you respect it, because like a lot of these Jun decks are like big and clunky, and like this deck's big and clunky too. But it even gets bigger and clunkier after sideboard. But like I've got these two Radiant Flames, so I have a feeling that I can hold up with this, that I can hang on to these human matchups. So again, thank you everybody for showing up today. My name is Dylan Hubby. You found up on my stream. Um, if you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. It's easy, it doesn't do anything. Um, if you want to support me, go over to my YouTube page, which is all linked below, and just subscribe to the channel. You can turn the notifications off, it doesn't bother you. Like, I just, like, the, that's the biggest way to, to support me, is to just subscribe to my YouTube channel. All of my streams are archived. You'll see John, Death Shadow, many other modern decks on there, some standard and some legacy. Um, if you want to support the people that sponsor me, Gamer Craze is linked below. Their Crystal Commerce is there. They have a very cheap uh, buy and sell system because they foster a college environment. And then Card Hoarder, I'm part of the Card Hoarder Network, and Card Hoarder is the best bot chain in the business. So, I appreciate y'all for being here. Okay, Thoughtseize discards Beltongloid, which is how we drew it up. God, my life would be so much worse without coffee. Have I ever mentioned that my favorite thing to do when my opponent mulligans is hit them with a discard spell? And put a card on the bottom. So we're just gonna take this flame blade adept. We don't currently have a good answer for it. I'd like to save this pulse for a hollow one or a Dell card. So I think that this is actually a tough matchup for John. There's the black leaf. Get my boy Tarmogoy. This will go fetch like a stomping ground or a blood crypt. Dude, hopefully he bolts it. That would be sweet. Please bolt my dude. He didn't bolt my dude. So now he's got a cycle street race. Okay, so we hit a land. We're gonna get some hollowed action here. Yep, we're gonna get a hollowed one to play. All right, still got my, still got my. So what do you? He ditched a lightning bolt. So he still has Gurmag Angler in his hand, which is kind of annoying. And he ditched the bolt though. So I think I'm just gonna attack with my time of life. Hitting, he, he milled a scavenging his over, which kind of sucks. I'm gonna play another time of life and then play a raging ravine. This deck is very like clunky. Like it, it's like a big plotting Dumbo, you know, like it's, it's just like, like if you, if you don't, like if you let it just do its thing, then it's just like, wow, this deck is sweet. But, it is a little clunky. So my opponent can shrink the Tarmogoyf to a 3-4. It's nasty gear nasty. Okay. So now I got 3-4 goys. So again, I'm just going to pulse this angler. I could just pulse this. It depends on what I draw. If I draw a lightning bolt, then I'm just gonna pulse this and then attack and bolt my. And then they go block, just bolt my opponent. Okay, we still got the pulse and our Tarmogoyf screw. They would have liked to see an attack from my opponent for that exact reason. Okay, so comes the flame like Phoenix. So if I actually can pulse this hollow one and then both my Tarmogoyfs are lethal. And I can hit them with a discard spell. A 
Let's see what they're doing. Okay, it doesn't matter. So my opponent can just take this, but then they can't crack this fetch land. And these flame wake phoenixes have to attack. So I don't think my opponent has a draw that, you know. So again, I don't really, oh, 31 viewers, holy shnikes. We hit a little jump up there. Squaw Chief, much appreciate the host there. If you're coming over from Squaw Chief's stream, my name is Dylan Hubby. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. So I appreciate everybody being over here and checking out my stream. Squaw Chief is the man. Hey, Jimmy. Okay. So I don't think Liliana is very good in this matchup. My lightning bolts are pretty medium. The discard spells aren't that great on the draw either. So what are cards I do want? I want my spell bomb. I think I want Thoughtseize, because Thoughtseize hits Hollow One and Nasty Germasty. Bard. I'm actually Mike Sigrest, I'm not Bard. Oh, that goes over here. I have no idea how to sideboard with this deck. I think I want the K command. And I saw Reed bring in some Ancient Brothers. So maybe we'll bring in some Ancient Brothers. Cut these. I don't really like Inquisition of Kozilek on the draw. Because like they just hit their Burning Inquiry and then they're like off to the races. The last hope is probably... Well... Are any of these cards better? Like is the Lightning Bolt just garbage? The Terminate's fine. The Abrupt Decay. They have a blood. Their Blood Moon deck after sideboard. But I can just kind of fetch around that maybe. I just have no idea how to sideboard in this matchup. Like I want these to hit Gurmag Angler. Huntmaster seems pretty good. Um, I could bring this. Like, should I bring Collector Brutality? And then if I want them, what do I cut? Last Hope actually seems kind of egregious. Yeah, I think we're just going to try this. I have no... The guy, this is this is my first time. It's my first stream with Jund. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody with the follows. Usually stream every... And Geo Finish, if you're still in there. I usually stream every Wednesday and Sunday, but I'm going to an IQ tomorrow. So, I think the sand's good. Hopefully they inquiry my ancient grudge away. That would be gas. Keep this. Play mulligan. Also, like, mulliganing against this deck is really annoying because you can keep this hand. It's, like, it's very good. And then all of a sudden... It just gets burning and created away and does nothing. I'm glad we're not getting burning and created, which means we're gonna be able to get down like get down some beaters. Probably play Bob next turn. Because it's probably gonna die. And like my Tarma Wife dies to lightning bolt. And I'm gonna probably play Blood Crypt because this is gonna get a green source, because we just want. We want to sandbag this scavenging news and have the scavenging news just clean up. Oh god, I misclicked. I literally was just talking about the other play and then clicked on the scavenging news. I've just been on autopilot this morning. I don't know if I got enough sleep last night or what. That scavenging news was the game plan. Well, if we just go for it and it works out, we're in good shape. This turn I can go, like, fetch Stomping Ground, play Tarmogoyf, and then have an E-Up. Yeah, like, I was literally, like, Jimmy, I was literally telling me, like, that's the second time I've done that today, where I've literally said, like, okay, here's my play and here's why it's good, and then I just do the complete opposite thing. It's like I have a disconnect between my mouth 
in my brain and then my clicking finger. Like this finger here doesn't work. Could moon me, yep. I always forget to play around Blood Moon. So maybe the play this turn, here's, here's Nasty Girl Nasty. Betrayed by the clicking finger for sure. So I think this is just a thought seize. Into basic land, tunnel life. Well, they brought in Grudge as well. So my whole, my opponent's whole hand is bad. Might as well hit an angler. So I wonder if I'm actually supposed to just try to like double block this Gurmag angler and trade either my Tarmogoyf or my or my uh, scavenging ooze for this angler. And I think I'm gonna do that. I kinda just wanna like stabilize the board and have Dark Confidant on like a, where I'm not under a lot of pressure. So I'm just gonna flat moving back, which doesn't change my Tarmogoyf size. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good morning. I'm gonna stream until the SCG. And then unfortunately do my taxes. The scavenging is also kind of nice because it can harass my opponent's Gurmag Angler next turn. Because like this is probably what he's loading up to do. And then I can at least eat it and grow it. Like the scavenging use does provide a quite a bit of quite a bit of pressure. So he might just attack. Alright, so my Tarmogoy is Grande. Okay, so we ditch the angler. That's interesting. What do they have in their hand? So I'm basically trading scavenging use for Gurmag Angler here. I think they probably drew into another angler. I think I'm just gonna do this because if they wanna trade, that's okay. I have three Colagons commands and I can play Bob on an empty board. If they play Hollow One, I have it covered. But I think the name I think how I'm gonna win this game is just play Bob on a stable board. And then if I can like play Bob, be okay, I should be good. So he's just getting my time away out of here. Okay, so I'm definitely just going to eat an angler, play Bob, and attack. I would assume we have another angler in the future. So they still have the Ancient Grudge in their hands. We know, we know one out of three cards that they have. I think we're almost to 800 followers, which is a goal of mine. So there's a flame like Phoenix. This, I don't really understand what my opponent's doing here. They like misclicked. Did they, did the, did the finger get them as well? They got me earlier. So like, I understand. Like the, 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 the trigger finger got him. That's gotta be what happened. Cause like, there's no way you ditch both of those anglers if you have a flame like Phoenix in your hand. All right, so we need some land, Bob. Hook me up. Kitchen Finks isn't bad. Dotsies is bad. So we're attacking for six here. Eat a card next turn. Then I attack for lethal. How do I lose? How do I lose? Do I play another Dark Confidant? I lose to my opponent having a way to kill one of my creatures. So I'm actually just gonna Thought Seize them. I don't understand what's going on here. So I'm gonna try to figure it out. Okay, so the cut, no, Driven to Despair. That's fine. Ancient Grudge, I'm just gonna take this Flame Blade Adept. Because Driven to Despair doesn't do anything. The Flame Blade Adept blocks. So, like, I, I lose to my opponent clearing out my, my, uh, or having blockers for my creatures. Yes, Bob could flip the old, the old M Daddy.
flop. Bob could flip a Tarasov on now and get me. My, my opponent must have misclicked because like, I don't understand their plays besides that. What do we got here? Black mana. Nasty, Gurmasty. That's a way we lose. Tilt. So this Bob can kill me next turn. So like Bob is Bob is playing for my opponent right now. Oh, they're not. They're just dead. Forgot they took two damage off the street race. My opponent goes LOL. I'm like, alright, dude, like whatever. Alright, we're going for another 4-1. Yes, the top. I hope everyone from Squad Chief's stream had a good stream. I like watching Squad Chief. I donated to Squad Chief. Right when he did his 24 hour one. Oh, geez, one crow. But I'm going to bring it up here again. My name is Dylan Hovey. You guys are on my stream. I really appreciate that. We're part of the Card Hoarder Network. So if you have any Magic Online needs, you should pick Card Hoarder. Their team's awesome. Their stream's awesome. The service is awesome. Best bot chain. Um, Gamer Crazy is where I learned to play Magic. Their Crystal Commerce is linked below. They buy and sell singles. They buy and sell them at a really good price because they have like four colleges right in the environment. So they got to make it so the college kids can afford the cards. So I usually sell at low rate, buy at low rate just to keep cards moving. Um, you can always find my streams archived on YouTube. That's the best way to support me is just go to my YouTube channel. It's linked below and just subscribe there. Um, and then like if you like talking about magic, you should check me out on Twitter. Like I mostly just tweet about magic and I tweet about my absolutely watch out chat we're going for a ride i tweet about my absolutely adorable puppy there so yeah if you guys would check that out that is the best way that you can support me so let's get back into it going for the old 4-1 i would like to play for i want the die roll too it's gas all right, we're gonna keep this. This hand probably gets like this gets stomping ground if I had to guess. It obviously gets a black source. It doesn't really matter if it's blood crypt or stomping ground to be honest. I just hope that I get to bolt something. Like, please let me bolt something. Griff looks like a nice archive on YouTube. Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff there. What does this mean? I don't know. I'm not going to fetch it, though. This makes me think my... This, like, Misty Rainforest kind of makes me think they're a Blood Moon deck. But, like, I can't really fetch around Blood Moon. With how my hand is. I'm so used to playing Death Shadow, where... Like, I just click through my end phase there, where I usually just, like, hold my fetch lands for as long as possible with Death Shadow to get the most information about what I should fetch. This Tarmogoyf is more than likely dead. Yeah, so I think we're playing against a Blood Moon deck, which is not good for how our hand is set up. We're going to have to get on the board quickly. Okay, we're not playing against a Blood Moon deck, thank God. This is, like, that control deck. Oh, it's a Bant deck. All right. Kill. Just gonna play out another Garmatoy. You know, you know what card's really annoying for Liliana? The Voice of Resurgence. My first modern deck that I ever played was like that Brian Kibler big zoo deck like four or five years ago, and I used to just absolutely destroy Giant because I played four. I played I played four Locks on Smiters and played like probably four Voices in my seventy five, and. It was just like absolutely miserable because like Liliana is probably one of the cards that, at least before Blood Red Elf that held this deck together. I heard somebody one compare this to Jun's like brainstorm effect because it allows you to trade your resources with them. What is this? this is a reflector mage? It's a knight. I'm gonna double block this voice if my opponent gives me the option. I'm definitely just gonna kill that. But like 
the fact that this um, this turns your like when you draw too many removal spells against a combo deck, this can trade them for resources. You can turn your crap cards into actual cards. Land. We have 25. Hook me up. God. I'm just gonna play another tunnel. I could bolt this ooze, but. I guess another thing that's like kind of frustrating about playing John is like you have just so many tap lands. And like the tap lands are a little frustrating. Like I could see a world I, I play four Raging Ravines and four Black or I play three Raging Ravines, a treetop village, and four black leaf cliffs. I could see a world where I like thin down on that a little bit. Maybe more on tap lands. Alright, we're gonna take a shot. This is like incoming spell queller. God, play another night. Go team. And then our Tarmogoyers are just massive. God, this deck is... How does anybody ever lose with this deck? They play Tron. Let's be real. Give me the two for as you free my soul. I'm gonna run to the bathroom quickly while my opponent waits. I would agree with that, Van Gretzky. That, like, it's just an inferior deck at the moment. Alright, back. 
Okay. I don't think it's great when people are trying. Okay, so now I just attack with all my Tarmogoyfs. Play attack land. After this match, I'm going to take my dog out before I start my next league. An LG has invitation card card today. I can't decide to do elves or a giant, which I put together. But I'm not probably going to play elves. Elves is like super great. We're going to get one of these paths, it looks like. Which is like fine. I mean, if I can't believe they didn't path one of their knights. Like. Like, knight is, knight is so good. That's nice. I'm just going to fix our mana a little bit. I think I just want as many green sources as possible. Because, like, if this comes down to a scavenging use off, I just want to win that. Yeah, so after this match, before I'm probably going to play one more league before the Star City Games. But I'm going to put my screen up and I'm going to take my dog out. My dog's just eaten breakfast at the moment. So, hopefully I whip my opponent quickly. We've got two good cards. Like, we can we pretty much have their next play covered. Because even if they play a big moron, we just, like, bolt them and then edict them. Like, the scariest thing they could do to us is play a voice of resurgence. That's just to tilt my opponent. So I played Reed Duke's main deck. Um, I changed his, yeah, I think you can see on the stream decker, I changed some of his sideboard because I don't think that it's worth sideboarding cards against Jund, or against uh, Tron. Okay, so let me just go bolts. Because, like, you just, you just can't beat it. And it's, you might as well just, like, get, like, I added, like, a couple sweepers. I added another duress to help against like the combo decks. And it's just like nearly impossible to win against Tron in my opinion that I might as well just get the matchups in other places. And like we're, you know, obviously we're, we're getting rewarded by that. We are, um, you know, in these, in these last two leagues, I haven't played against Tron once. So I've gotten very lucky. I'm just gonna bolt. I gotta burn to win this game. Get out of my face. I'm gonna pause my YouTube video also. So I'm gonna all this this whole stream is gonna be archived on my YouTube channel, which is linked below. Um, if you're like a big modern person, that's basically what all my streams are. So against this deck, I don't think I want any inquisitions. I would like. Thoughtseize to hit like collected company. I like this. Cards I don't really like, especially on the draw. I don't like Liliana the Veil because of Voice of Resurgence. Um, collected Brutality is nice. It hits a bunch of his little dudes. And I guess this game. Oh, I want to fail. My, and then this fatal push. Just anything that builds, that kills big creatures. Like brutality hits collected company, which is really what I'm what I'm worried about. I'm worried about company, and then the deck might play like a Jace or something like that. Last hope's nice because it shrinks the big dudes and can pick off, you know, can kind of clean up combat. Radiant Flames is like pretty hit or miss in this matchup. I think like sometimes it's very good because you clean up their board, but then like they play Knight, and Knight's huge. Actually, I don't know if it's worth bringing these in. I don't know what I would cut. Like, maybe these last hopes are not very good on the draw. Maybe I could just, like, plan to switch these, play draw. If you're trying 24 lands. Yep, 24 lands. I usually board a land out whenever I take out my Blood Red Elves. What do we think, chat? Do we, what's better, the Liliana Last Hope or the Radiant Flames? Maybe these K commands aren't any good. Especially considering the games are probably going to come down to like scavenging uses. So which I can keep in two, four of these six. I'm going to cut the K commands and try to bring them in while I'm on the play. Because like shocking a scavenging use or something is probably good while you're on the play. I can see the shock just being worth more. 
I might be like completely wrong here. I don't play too much Jund, so we are just kind of winging it. See, it's pretty good. This is like we can push a hierarch, and then like we can we can get a lot of tempo in this hand. We can put our tap land into play on turn two. Oh, I forgot to get coffee. I'll get it later. Oh, they're playing a tap land. So we're gonna thought seize target voice of resurgence. Because that card is annoying. And I'm a little punished for not oh settle the records. Jeez. I'm... Yeah, we're just gonna take the cards that matter here, which is settle. And then we can pulse the Gideon. So I'm just gonna take settle. And then I'm gonna thought seize again next turn. And maybe take path. And if Gideon's my opponent's first play, then we can deal with that. Yeah, I definitely think I'm just going to take Path to Exile. Because if I draw a Bob, I want Bob to clear the way. This card's annoying. Well, now we kind of just throw it all out the window. I guess now I'll take the Spell Queller. Because I can just kind of ham. Like, I can't do... Like, no matter what, I'm not going to be able to resolve a two-drop play next turn. So, because I, I would need a fetch land to turn on Revolt. And I would have to draw a fetch land and a two drop. So I might as well just, I'm just gonna pulse the Gideon. The two two's not really gonna matter. Hey, stop that. You get sleepies in your eyes, buddy. Don't worry, we're going out. So now I actually am just gonna pulse Push this, play Dark Confidant, get it pull, get it path to get to my next land. Maybe I should have just left that. I probably should have just left that in play. My opponent passed me. I then pulse the Gideon. Yeah, I should have just left this. That was stupid. You distracted me, buddy little dog sitting here. He likes sitting under things. We're gonna get a forest here. So he's sitting under my chair right now. And he's just chilling, just being super cute. The ally of Zendikar. I love this card. I top eight back-to-back -back regionals in Baltimore, and I had four of these in my green-white aggro deck and two of these in my Abzan deck. That's not a bad draw. Like we're in, we're in the market for lands. This two two is not going to matter. Hey. Play a Druid Noble Hierarch, cracking for three. All right, so they're out. So this Blood Elf is going to be gas. We're looking for a scavenging ooze. Just something to mop this game up. All right, no, we're not gonna cast that. Tilt. I'm just gonna trade this off, I think. I'm pretty sure my deck has better draws the longer the game goes, and we have this Raging Ravine as another resource. Because, like, my opponent's running on empty if we trade here. And, like, I don't really want to be trading three damage for three damage when I'm behind so far in my life total. Like, we'll go fetch a tap land and then fire up this ravine next turn. Might as well just wait, hold the fort, take it slow. a night. Okay. We got that covered. Just gonna trade. Okay, they're not looking to trade. Which I find odd. Like turn your Gideon into a two for one. Should definitely grab the an overgrown tomb there. That was a mistake. 
And I would like to just, but I need to just guarantee get this knight off the battlefield. The longer knight of the reliquary stays in play, like the worse it gets for us. Definitely fetch the wrong land there. Again, we'll just play this holding game, and I'll just blood raid elf the next turn. And I would, I would have really liked to elf there, but I think like the adult decision is to just deal with this knight. We're gonna put that radiant flames in our pocket for a late, for a rainy day. Okay. Get this off the battlefield. Now we're gonna crack in. If my opponent has another settled wreckage, then like whatever. They have a settled wreckage. Crack them for six. Okay, this is a company. No, they're just they're just like drawing. Absolute garbage. Yeah, they're just, they're just fighting. My opponent's fighting out pretty hard. So it looks like we're going to win this one. This definitely is going to be this overgrown tomb. Just more black sources. And we're winning because we're not playing as strong. Like that that that's kind of how it is. Like we've just built the deck to punt the Tron matchup. And that's just what we're looking to do. So I need two blockers. Actually I don't need two blockers because I can block the ravine. Kind of. I guess it's not really annoying unless they have another one. The overgrown tomb. Can I double activate this? No. Not yet. Can't do that cool trick. This is kind of rough. My opponent's draw was pretty atrocious. Our draw was not great. I mean, we just hit two blood red elves, which one of the blood red elves only, like, yeah, our, kind of both my opponent and I just drew kind of awkwardly like they drew obviously much worse than I did but it's not like I beat them by getting a heater like I just pulsed a couple things pushed one thing and had a couple thought seizures like just kind of your run of the mill all right so there we go with the 4-1 back to back 4-1s which is gas I'm going to go take my puppy out and then I will be right back. Probably in about 10 minutes or so, and I will do one more later. Our 16 chests are 3,500 play points. That's gas. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording. We're going to actually break the YouTube video up. We'll have two different ones that go up today.